G'day guys, welcome to today's tutorial. Today we are talking about the seated military Swiss bar press. Fantastic uh, option for those who potentially have shoulder issues um, and struggle getting their hands in, in uh, I don't know if you call it pronated, we'll go with pronated grip on the seated, um, seated military press with the barbell. Uh, the reason being is because we can get ourselves into uh, a different hand position, either the 45 or the 90 degree, um, which is going to open up those shoulders. So let's talk quickly about the, the anatomy of the shoulder. The way our shoulder joint sits is that our, our scapula comes around a little bit forward, which means that for our shoulders to run um, optimally and, and really smoothly, we don't actually want to go at, at, out nice and wide like so, like, like a bird would be flapping their wings right by your side. We actually want to come slightly forward. Um, and that's not a 45, but that's just slightly forward uh, and that'll make our shoulders run really, really smoothly uh, with a lack uh, or, or a minimizing chance of risk of injury. So it's the reason why potentially if you're doing a, an overhead press, that gets you to tuck your elbows in and allow that shoulder joint to run smoothly. Also, instead of coming out nice and wide, that being said, if you don't have shoulder issues, this isn't an issue, it's just a preventative measure. Um, and also with a dumbbell press, not only do you get more torque through your pectoral muscles by coming in slightly um, uh, uh, at a 45, but also it alleviates that shoulder issue. So that's the reason why um, you know this option is a really good option if you have shoulder issues is because it allows you to come down maybe a little bit narrower in, in a neutral grip position um, and uh, or a 45. Okay, so let's talk about our setup. Our setup is exactly the same way as we would any bench press um, and or our, our military press with the barbell, and that is we're going to create three points of contact. Uh, those three points are going to be our hips, our feet, and our shoulder blades uh, are going to be, be, be pulled back and down and pinned. Um, now, with, with this particular exercise and also the military barbell press, um, <coughs> What I do with my feet is I actually start with them uh, nice and flat and, and driving force back and into the bench. So this is gonna create my point one of contact, driving back and also point two, driving back into the back of the bench, which is my hips. Um, <clears throat> then as I start to fatigue, um, and, uh, and, and get through the, the set itself, I will actually readjust and bring my feet underneath my backside and then start to create what we call leg drive and that is by going up onto my toes and driving my heels down so I still create that tension through the quads and drive it up into uh, the air and transfer up and into the air and hopefully up and into the lift and get that extra one or two reps out. The reason I do that is because in this position here, I find that it is all um, shoulders and obviously it is nothing but the shoulders working. When I need that little bit extra, create that leg drive, create that extra little bit of thoracic extension and then I drive up. Okay, some would say that's arguably cheating, some would be right, but <clears throat> um, you know, it keeps the tension on, I'm not arching heavily, or not that arching is an issue, I don't even know why I brought that up, but I'm not lifting my points one or two off the bench, um, and it's a really good way just to get that extra uh, one or two reps in um, without losing that stimulus through the, uh, through the working muscle. Now, what we need to remember, and we always revert back to this, is our acronym STEP. S for stability, T for tension, E execution, and then we track our P for performance. Um, our stability is going to be coming from our flat back, our hips, so our points one, two, and three. Okay, so the way we are going to create our flat back is really simple. Our scapula or our, um, our, our uh, shoulder blade, it, it sits on our back. This is a massively over-exaggerated, but it sits on our back like so. Our lats help by pulling it back and down, and this is what's going to create a flat back. So if you think that you have, oh, how am I gonna demonstrate this? If you think that you have two like this, and we pull back and down, it's gonna create a nice flat, flat back for us to then press from. So that's stability. So how we do that, Again, pull out, pull back and down. So think about pulling your shoulder blades back into your back pockets. You can use your hands to help get you right up and get these shoulder blades tucked back and down. And you can see that I get into thoracic extension. This thoracic extension position also helps alleviate those shoulder issues that you may or may not have. 
Now let's talk about these shoulder issues. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, when we're in this position here and we're coming down, maybe at the bottom it flicks, it, it a sharp pain, whatever the case may be, um, might grab, who knows, right? Uh, what I would suggest you do then is obviously in the barbell seated military press, I started with the bar low, okay? I would actually suggest that you start with the bar high and the reason why we want to do that is because what we're going to do is control that eccentric portion, okay? Then get to the position and then drive up, okay? Okay? And that's how we want to be performing pretty much every lift anyway. But um, in this particular instance, what it'll do, it'll, that, it'll help trigger your mind to muscle connection. So by controlling your eccentric portion, you've really got to think about, okay, I need these shoulders on, I need these shoulders on. And you, you'll start to understand and feel, hang on, I'm actually not feeling um, the working muscle. And, and when that's not happening, that's when we can get ourselves into some issues. So, and also, like you're doing a shoulder exercise and you can't feel your shoulders and well, I think you got some issues there. So, um, okay, so how do we get ourselves in a really good spot when it comes to our, um, our, our eccentric portion? Obviously, we want to start with the bar up because the eccentric is on the way down and then the concentric is always the working phase. So, for example, if I was doing a bicep curl, uh, the lowering of the weight or the easy, um, easy portion of the lift is the eccentric and the hard portion is where we lift it up and that's concentric and that's... Um, yeah, well, that's the hard part. So um, <clears throat> we're going to be pulling our shoulder blades back and down. We're going to make sure that these hips are jammed up against the back of the bench. Okay, you can see that my feet are already trying to slide into um, that position uh, underneath. But we're going to place them <clears throat> out in front, driving force back, shoulder blades pinned back and down. I have a nice stable platform to press from. Now we're going to be driving the weight up. So we're going to grab a hold of the bar, start that above my head. Now in this position, what I'm going to do with my hands is I'm actually going to be thinking about driving force this way, okay? And by doing that, it's going to switch on both my shoulders and you're going to be able to keep tension through that working muscle the entire time. So <clears throat> again, shoulder blades are gonna go back and down. We're gonna come up above our head. We're gonna be pulling the, our hands apart as if this bar is connected in the middle and we're gonna be pulling it apart. From here, we're gonna come down and to the front of our chest and then press up fast and come up and above our head. Again, down, slow, control, press above our head. Okay, press above our head. Now, let's say, let's assume that um, I'm starting to fail. All right, what I tend to do is just tuck these feet underneath, drive these heels down, keep everything else nice and pinned. Okay, and then with my legs, I'm driving through the ground. One, again, drive through the ground. Two, and this here, team, is how you want to go about doing your seated Swiss bar military press. Um, little word of advice is that if you are starting at the top, obviously the hooks are at the top, and there might come a portion whereby you do get stuck or fail at the bottom. Um, grab, if you're doing this particular exercise in a squat rack or, or, a, or a half rack or whatever kind of rack you're using, um, I would suggest that you, you set up some catches, okay, at the bottom. So you can see here that I have the, um, the catches at the bottom here. Really good way to just keep yourself completely safe. And if you get into strife, all you do is you stop at your chest, lean forward and disc rack it like so. Um, if you don't have access to those, it's fine. Just set up another set of hooks at this height as well. So you get to your chest, you're okay, don't panic. Um, we'll do it here. Right? So you get to your chest and you're like, okay, I'm in strife. Now at this point, you can just rest it on your chest and you're fine. And you can see that I can sit it on the, on the, uh, the, the catches. Or if I'm looking for hooks, I can just sit slightly forward, find the hooks and up and down from there. All right, team. <laughs> that there is how you want to go about doing your Swiss bar uh, seated military press. I hope you picked up a few tricks and tips in this particular tutorial. Uh, go chase those games.